In this video, we'll talk about drug-induced lupus and how is it different from SLE. The idea behind drug-induced lupus is that there are certain drugs the patient is taking for chronic time and these medications need to be metabolized by acetylation in the liver and these patients have inability to do that because they have some genetic deficiency in one of the acetyltransferase which means that these medications won't be metabolized properly and that will induce a lupus-like inflammatory response in the body. Now, these medications include 38 medications, but the most commonly used one are procanamide, hydralazine, menocycline, isoniazide, and TNF-alpha inhibitors. Now, if you want to know which ones are mostly involved in drug-induced lupus, are the first two, procanamide and hydralazine. And hydralazine actually is the most common cause of drug-induced lupus based on drug to disease ratio. Now how can we differentiate it from SLE and the answer is it's basically SLE minus renal and CNS involvement and you want to make sure that or understand that this is more acute here and it can happen over a few weeks and the SLE symptoms, the main ones that can be present in drug-induced lupus are arthritis, which are going to be bilateral in the hands involving the metacarpophalangeal and the proximal interpharyngeal joint as well. And the rash here is going to be the subacute rash, which looks like psoriatic or annular rash. We talked about that. And again, the renal involvement is going to be creatinine normal and no proteinuria. And as I mentioned, it's more acute or subacute over a few weeks after taking the medication. Now, what about the labs? So, CBC is going to be normal. Complements are going to be normal compared to SLE. As well as double-stranded DNA and anti-Smith antibodies, both are going to be negative. Now, the most important lab you want to check in patients with drug-induced lupus is antihistone antibodies. It is a very sensitive antibody. It's around 95 to 100% sensitivity, but not as much specific though, because it can be seen in different diseases like SLE, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, and other different diseases. So you can mainly use it for ruling out drug-induced lupus. Regarding treatment, easy, treat the cause, stop the medication, and you can supplement or make conservative management with NSAIDs and topical steroids to treat the rash. And if the patient still have persistent symptoms, then you can try hydroxychloroquine. And this is it for this video. Hope you guys learned something. See you in the next one.